we never see gasoline overflowing like this. As soon as the gas level crosses a limit, a ticking sound is heard and the nozzle automatically closes. The engineers achieved this feature without the use of any electronics. This may seem hard to believe, but this simple looking hand lever is the trickiest part of the mechanism. The hand lever has two parts, which are hinged as shown. This is the path of gasoline flow. Now, let's fix or lock a rod as shown. Note that the rod is not able to go down further due to this neck. The end of this rod is hinged to the end of the aluminum part. This valve controls the fuel flow, which is spring-loaded. Now let's extend the end of this valve. This extended portion passes through the gap between the plastic portion, but touches the aluminum part of the hand lever. Can you tell what would happen if you press down on the handle? The handle can only rotate with respect to this point. Let's watch this animation once again. This will press open the valve and the flow of gasoline will start. This clip will even help the customer to lock the handle lever in this position and relax. Here comes the most genius part of the entire mechanism. When the tank becomes full, this gas nozzle should automatically close this valve. Just imagine what would happen if this yellow rod was not locked here. Remember, the spring of the valve is in a compressed state, and it wants to expand. If the yellow rod is no longer locked, the spring will expand as shown and the nozzle will be shut. However, if this rod is not locked during normal operation, we will never be able to open the valve. The yellow rod will just move down. So this is the design challenge in front of the engineers. The yellow rod should be locked at the time of nozzle opening, and the same rod should suddenly become unlocked once the gasoline crosses a specific level in the fuel tank. This is why the engineers modified this simple yellow rod to this. This balls cone arrangement is quite interesting. When the cone is down, the yellow rod won't be able to go down or it is locked since the balls are stuck here. But what if the cone is up like this? Now the balls are free to roll inward. This causes the rod to go down automatically because of the push from the main valve spring. Let's watch the animation once again and understand how the flow gets shut off automatically. To make the cone move upward, the engineers made use of negative air pressure. Have you noticed this tiny hole in a plastic pipe connected to it at the end of the gas nozzle? If you follow the pipe, it will lead to this narrow region of gasoline flow. In fact, the engineers behind this invention added a small spring-loaded check valve and made this gap even narrower. When the gasoline is allowed to flow, the flow will push and open the check valve so that the fluid can flow through this narrow gap. To understand the clear path of gasoline flow, please follow these arrows. Why does narrowing the gap matter here? It's because velocity will be higher there. According to Bernoulli's principle, the pressure will be low. Since the plastic pipe ends there, this low pressure will cause suck air from outside. This air will get mixed with the gasoline at this junction. Everything is fine so far. But what if the gasoline level crosses this hole? If this happens, the pipe is no longer able to suck in the air. Did you notice another air channel near the narrow region? Now the air movement can start through there. However, the clever engineers sealed air in this region with a diaphragm. That way, when the air moves, this diaphragm will deflect upward. Can you predict how engineers will make use of this diaphragm movement? Yes, you're right. They connected it with the small cone which controls the balls. Due to the cone's upward movement, the yellow rod is free to move downward, and this will shut off the flow of gasoline. It's a simple but genius mechanism to shut off the fuel automatically. To understand this mechanism's more genius features, let's enlist the help of 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers a new, affordable way to use SOLIDWORKS for personal projects and more 
now available for just $38 US dollars per year. Click the link in the video description below to save 20% off the maker offer and buy today. Did you notice which point was the pivot point of the handle when you opened the valve? It was right here. Now, assume the gasoline level reached the top level, and, due to the negative pressure, this diaphragm goes up. This time, when the valve closes, the pivot point shifts to the other end of the aluminum piece. Changing the pivot point of the same mechanism, based on the situation, is pretty cool, isn't it? However, this is not the initial position of the gas nozzle. How do we get it back to its original position? The engineers used another trick here by extending the torsion spring of the nose clip as shown. Now, let's observe the automatic closing motion once again. The stem from the valve first pushes and deflects this spring. As a result, at the other end of the spring, it transmits force as shown to the clip. This force is sufficient to unseat the clip from the rack. Once the clip lock is removed, the hand lever moves down along with the push of the stem. If you observe, the only component that is not in the original position is the yellow rod. This is why the engineers introduced this spring to the yellow rod. This spring has a lower spring force value than the spring of the valve. Now let's watch what happens to the newly introduced spring during the automatic valve closure. The new spring will get compressed. Once the valve is fully closed, the compressed spring can return to its original position. Hooray! After the automatic shutoff, every component of the nozzle is back to its original position. Let's observe the working of this brilliant mechanism once again. Did you notice the pivot point of rotation in the last stage of motion? This is the third pivot point in the same mechanism. Engineers are damn brilliant. Let's enjoy some slow motion footage of the automatic closure of the gas nozzle. It closes too fast, right? This gas nozzle may look ideal, but there is still one issue. What if one user kept the nozzle on in the dispenser? When the next user takes the dispenser, the dispenser gets activated and the fuel starts to flow. Engineers also solved this problem without using any electronics. To avoid such accidents, they decided that the cone should be in the down position only if the fuel is pressurized. To achieve this, they added one more diaphragm and spring. You can see when the fuel is pressurized how this spring gets compressed. This moves the ball radially outward. In short, in this type of nozzle, without the pressurized fuel, the balls are not locking the yellow rod. When the fuel is not pressurized, even if you press the hand lever up, the lever won't be able to open the main flow valve. You can see the not locked yellow rod just moves down when you press the lever. These kinds of nozzles are known as pressure sensing nozzles. As we discussed earlier in the video, to open the valve of pressure sensing nozzles, high pressure fuel should be present in the nozzle. Only then, the balls move radially out and lock the yellow rod. This way, without any electronics, the engineers solved a big problem in the gas stations. The fuel nozzle you see here does not have a pressure sensing mechanism. How do I know this is not a pressure sensing type nozzle? Well, here the hose is not pressurized and I am pressing the hand lever on. Now let's pressurize the hose. You can see the nozzle is allowing the water flow. This means even though the hose was not pressurized, when I press the hand lever, the valve got open. After three weeks of study, soul works and a lot of experimentation, Finally, when I understood the complete mechanism of the genius invention, I almost cried. If you like experiments, we have built a simplified 2D gas nozzle mechanism for you. This is how you open the nozzle. As long as this cone is down, this nozzle will allow fuel flow. But when I raise the cone a little bit, the magic happens. You can see from the slow motion visual how the balls roll inward and because of the push from the compressed spring, how the valve and the rod move down, 
shutting down the nozzle automatically. Unfortunately, the inventor of this amazing mechanism is largely unknown. It's believed that the automatic gas pump nozzle mechanism was developed gradually over the years by different people. Before you leave, please don't forget to download the SolidWorks model of the gas pump nozzle and play with it. Thank you.